Welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Doan. I am going to talk about earthing and grounding and how it heals and the clinical and scientific evidence in which shows that earthing and grounding works for the human body. So ready? Let's get started. Okay, so I want to talk about some electrical principles that are pertinent to the human body. So I know electricians have gone to my page and said, why is a physician talking about electrical principles and they don't believe what I am teaching them? First off, I have a PhD in neuroscience. I spent more than 10 years of my life studying the electrical principles in the human body, specifically the brain. If you want to know about electricity in the body, you have to study and understand the brain. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the four forms of electrical pollutions that can exert a problem on the human body. Now I understand that the four forms of electrical pollution are EMF, electrical magnetic fields, magnetic fields, also radio frequencies, and also micro impulse electrical surges, which are considered to be dirty electricity. Now these forces, these electromagnetic forces or EMFs won't shock you, won't stop your heart, won't cause you to drop down and have a seizures. And that's why electricians will argue with you if you're talking about earthing and grounding, they're like, this is bull crap because how can an EMF field that I'm walking around every day working on electrical lines, I'm not getting shocked. I'm not having a heart attack. I'm not having a seizure. So therefore, it is harmless. Wrong. What I'm talking about are the microelectrical activities in the brain and the body that are influenced by EMF. There are scientific proof that that happens. And as a neuroscientist, I can guarantee you it's happening and it's affecting your mood, your sleep, your health, and overall, how fast you heal. So I'm going to talk about that and how that happens in the human body in relation to EMFs. Then I'm going to talk about solutions. What can you do to mitigate those causes and also talk about the scientific reasons why those mitigation methods actually work to heal the human body. So before we start, we have to talk about how the human body is conductive. What's interesting about this is that the human body really likes to be in a negative voltage state, meaning that the more negative your body is, the more likely it is to heal and have decreased inflammation. So it's interesting that Dr. Sokal and Sokal both are MD PhDs and they are from Poland and they did this experiment where they put the human body in a Faraday cage and the human body was then shielded from all EMFs. So when they measured the electrical potential of that human body, it was zero roughly around zero voltage. And, but they were measuring direct current, not alternating current, because they're not looking for the capacitive coupling induction of EMF onto the body. They were just looking at what will happen to the body when earthing or connected to the earth. So they took a wire and connected the human body to the earth and it dropped the body's voltage when we're actually barefoot touching the earth. So why is that? There are tens of thousands of lightning strikes all over the world at any given time because of storms. Those lightning strikes produce a lot of negative charge and electrons that charge the earth up like a battery. And when we touch that surface of the earth, those electrons can actually go into the human body because we're more positive than the earth. That basically charges our, our human body with electrons. Those electrons therefore can be used for antioxidants to basically neutralize free radicals or mitochondria and mitochondrial function and health. It can actually reduce oxidative stress in the body, reduce inflammation, and also neutralize the electrical difference that happens just through metabolism and living. So that is one theory on how earthing and grounding helps the human body is by just touching the earth that exists with a huge reservoir of electrons and when we go barefoot on the earth or actually using a grounding product to sleep on or to sit on or to touch during the day, those electrons are constantly flowing into the human body. 
humans have developed and lived on the earth for many, many, many years. And we have not always had shoes and homes that had basically flooring that prevented us from touching the earth. So this is a problem of modernization. And if you're more interested in learning about the problems of modernization, uh, look at my interview with Dr. Milham. Dr. Samuel Milham had written a book called Dirty Electricity and talks about the diseases that has been associated with modernization, living in a world that's disconnected to the earth, as well as in being introduced to a bunch of EMF and electrical pollution that surrounds us on a daily basis. So what does that mean? A lot of people say, well, if you get shocked by electrical currents in this hand, and then it's going to travel through the body and then exit, let's say, out of this hand. How is that conducted in the human body? There's two mechanisms. First off, electricity can actually follow a conductive path through the tissues, like an electrical wire. So if I put electrical currents here, it's going to travel through that copper wire. However, the other form, which is the main form, or which is the most common form of electrical conductance in the human body is through ion channels. What I mean is that there are sodium, potassium, and calcium ion channels in the body, the brain, and neurons. And for a neuron to conduct electricity, let's say, which is a nerve fiber, for the nerve fiber to conduct electricity down that nerve fiber, you have to have activation of voltage-gated ion channels. So in the closed state, there's no ion flow in or out of the cell. However, in the open state, there are ion flows. So when there's sodium in higher concentration outside the cell, sodium, for example, will rush into the cell. Same with calcium. Potassium is higher inside the cell or intracellularly. So therefore, when these ion channels open up for potassium, potassium rushes outside of the cell. And that changes the electrical potential of the cell and causes what they call depolarization, a more positive upstroke of electrical potential. Now, the repolarization is the outflux of potassium and that causes a decrease back to a more negative resting state. What activates these ion channels? Voltage. So therefore, if there's anything like a positive plus 30 millivolts or higher in terms of voltage exerted onto that ion channels, it will open up. That is where the problem lies when your body is in an electromagnetic field. When we are in electromagnetic field, there's something called capacitive coupling, where this wire that's conductive, it acts as a capacitor, and when placed into an electric field, we can actually measure alternating current through this because the electromagnetic field that's mainly in my home and my office and studio is EMF that runs at 60 hertz, which is cycles per second. Hertz is just a fancy word for cycles per second. So 60 cycles per second alternating current will actually cause a field that will exert a similar alternating current onto this conductive copper wire. And that's gonna happen in the human body.